then, so November is impending in just a few days and one of the sort of bookish themes of November for many of us I know is that it's also non-fiction November which is a hashtag that Olive over at the book Olive started. If you like reading non-fiction or want to get into non-fiction, Olive is the channel to check out. She has so many fantastic recommendations and reads really widely in terms of non-fiction and she sort of started the, the non-fiction November hashtag to encourage us to pick more non-fiction up in November. I love non-fiction but I definitely go through phases where I read a lot of non-fiction and where I read less non-fiction. It's something I find much easier to read when I'm in the sort of momentum, like once I've already like gathered up momentum and I've read a few non-fiction I'll read more and more. But if I don't read it for a little while I find it more difficult to get into. And I do have quite a few non-fiction books on my shelves that I really want to get to and would like to pick up some of in November. I don't plan on reading every non-fiction book I mention in this video in November. If I read 10 books that would be kind of incredible, so they're probably not going to be all non-fiction. But I would like to make the effort to read a few more than maybe I have been in previous months, so hopefully something like two or three. And in general I just wanted to share with you the 10 books on my shelves or on my audiobook app that are non-fiction and that I want to read the most and therefore you might encourage me to pick up sooner rather than later. You can let me know if you've read any of them or interested in any of them and want to hear what I think of them. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 non-fiction books on my TBR. Let's kick things off with the non-fiction titles I have on audiobook that I want to read because I definitely find audiobook one of the um, easiest ways to consume non-fiction. I feel like it reminds me of a lecture or a podcast and it's so nice to just listen to while I'm say like tidying or walking somewhere. And one of the books that is like highest on my TBR is Men Who Hate Women by Lord Laura Bates. Laura Bates is one of my favourite feminist non-fiction writers. Everyday Sexism is one of the best non-fiction books I've ever read but I also very much enjoyed Misogynation, her other adult title and this is her latest adult title, Men Who Hate Women. The subtitle of this one is From Incels to Pickup Artists, The Truth About Extreme Misogyny and How It Affects Us All. So this is very much focused on the uh, misogynistic culture online which very much seeps into reality, which stems from reality. It's not like online exclusive but these um, groups that arise online um, and that perpetuate this misogyny and like really disturbing outdated sexist ideas about women and gender roles and um, can become quite aggressive particularly online although like I said that can extend into um, the offline world as well and this is something that as somebody who spends a lot of time online I'm particularly invested in but I also just think is a really important um, point of modern feminism that should be explored. We should be talking about this culture online which can go towards lots of different extremist views um, but in this case we're going to be looking at sexism and misogyny and I think Laura Bates always does a fantastic job of researching and then presenting that research very accessibly so I'm looking forward to listening to this although I'm sure I'm going to find it very disturbing. Secondly on audiobook I have Pain and Prejudice by Gabrielle Jackson. So this one is all about the sexism in the <laughs> development of modern medicine. So it's looking at the way in which medicine has developed over the years and been studied and particularly in regards to pain and pain relief and how it's always been very focused on um, men's pain if we're talking about the traditional definition of the sexes um, and the way in which therefore women's pain has been dismissed so that could be in regard to um, menstruation um, a lot of discussion recently has surrounded endometriosis and the way that that's been dismissed by medical practitioners in the past and maybe not taken as seriously and just the way in which women's pain isn't always taken as seriously and isn't given the same level of attention and treatment and the way that medicine has developed to treat men's pain more seriously in the traditional sense if we're talking about the traditional um, definition of um, sexes. Because obviously as we know menstruation isn't something that is um, only experienced by women, it's also experienced by trans men, it's also experienced by people in the sort of whole spectrum of non-binary identities as well. But because it's associated with women, because these things are considered feminine and uh, womanly, that is the reason they've not been treated as seriously because women just aren't taken as seriously by society, so that's cool. Um, and I think this should be really, really interesting in terms of those kind of issues and I've heard really good things. So those are the two non-fiction audiobooks I really want to get to and now I'm going to share with you the physical books on my TBR. So the first one is 
super short and that should mean it's going to be really easy to get to and I definitely want to pick up in November which is On Connection by Kay Tempest. So this is Kay Tempest's first non-fiction title I believe. Kay Tempest is a writer and a poet particularly well known for their poetry but they're also a musician, they're also a fiction writer and they are one of my favourite poets if not my favourite poet of all time. I love the way that they string words together, it's so beautiful. And Faber has recently released this little title which they just sent to me on connection. And it's described as a meditation on the power of creative connection. Drawing on 20 years experience as a writer and performer, Kay Tempest explores how and why creativity, however we choose to practice it, can cultivate greater self-awareness and help us establish a deep relationship between ourselves and the world. So I think this is going to be quite intimate, I think this is going to be quite uh, personal. Um, but I also consider myself a creative person so I might find um, some sort of takeaway from this book and I just really really admire Kay Tempest so would like to kind of just read their first attempt at non-fiction and see what it has to offer. We then have another recent purchase for me and that is Dead Girls by Selva Almada. This one's actually translated so it's translated by Annie McDermott and I believe it's Argentinian so this is a true crime non-fiction title which looks at a spate of murders in Argentina in the 1980s of young girls and this book looks at these instances of violence against women amidst the wider culture of violence against women in a democratic country um, and just about sort of like the cultural implications of those crimes and I think this should be really fascinating. I don't read a lot of true crime or listen to a lot of true crime or watch a lot of true crime. It's not like a genre that I'm big up on like a lot of people are but I like that this obviously has that sort of slightly like um, feminist exploration of sexism and gendered violence aspect to it and hopefully I will find it really interesting in that regard um, and I'd certainly like to read something by this author because I hear a lot of good things. They also write fiction and it's translated so that's another like plus I definitely haven't read um, any translated fiction from Argentina so it would be good to have tried some. We then have one I'll definitely be reading because it's for a book club, it's for mine and Lauren over at Lauren Wade Reads Book Club The Feminist Orchestra and that is It's Not About the Burka. This is an essay collection edited by Mariam Khan. Mariam is such a wonderful person, like I've followed her on Twitter for years and I have so much respect for her and I've wanted to read this book ever since it came out. It includes words from Mariam but obviously lots of other contributors, it's an anthology. I'm not entirely sure if it's restricted by geography, I don't know if this is a UK only book because Mariam's from the UK, it might cover more of Western society but all of the essays are about these women's experiences of being um, a Muslim woman in today's Western society where they live and I think that this is going to be again really like personal and insightful and eye-opening and I really want to hear what they have to say. On the topic of book club reads I'm actually a little bit behind so there is another one that I need to pick up and that's Angela Davis's autobiography. So Angela Davis is one of my favourite human beings of all time. She is incredible. I love her non-fiction. She writes the most accessible yet powerful pieces of writings and she's also just an incredible speaker and an incredible activist in, in her own right. This obviously is her autobiography so everything I've read by her has been more like um, a collection of essays and um, almost like academic thought pieces although in a very accessible tone but this is obviously more personal about Angela Davis's experiences. She was a civil rights activist, is a civil rights activist, also a member of the Communist Party, the Black Panthers and she was herself a victim of the injustices of the American incarceration system and the racism um, of the American incarceration system so this will also I imagine talk about her experiences representing herself in court and going through that whole process as well as her like journey as an activist and a like individual in her experiences. I am so excited about this I think I've just been like a little bit intimidated to pick it up because I think she's such an impressive woman but I love her writing and it's usually so easy to read yet so insightful so looking forward to this. We then have a non-fiction book that I picked up secondhand and is super random and unlike much I've read before and that is Beyond Heaving Bosoms by Sarah Wendell and Candy Tan and this is a non-fiction book about romance literature. So I only really started reading um, romance literature as it's sort of like defined in its most explicit sense in the past couple of years. I was introduced to the genre by booktube and it's a genre that I myself had dismissed a little bit as being um, outside of what I wanted from literature as like someone who considered themselves like an intelligent feminist young woman and I have been corrected and I think that's really important not to dismiss genres like that because that's 
internalized sexism that I didn't realize I was perpetuating because it's a genre that is often dismissed because of its association with women and actually there's some fantastic romance out there and I absolutely love it so it was something that I wanted to read more up on in terms of non-fiction as well looking at the way that society treats romance writing um, and what romance writing can offer um, and the sexism in ingrained in the dismissal of that genre so I think this could, should be really good it had good reviews that's why I picked it up second hand but super random so I don't know what to expect we then have why women have better sex under socialism and other arguments for economic independence by Chris Kristen R. Godsey. I mean, quite the title kind of gives away what this book is about. It's about um, the sexist implications um, of capitalism and the relationship between patriarch and capitalism and how it specifically affects women. And I just love how punchy this title is. And I also love how unapologetic it sounds in tone. I've never read anything by this author before, so I'm not familiar with their work. Um, but there's a little um, sentence here right at the end of the blurb, which reads, if you don't give a wit about women's lives because you're a gynophobic right-wing internet troll, save your money and get back to your parents' basement right now. This isn't the book for you. So cool. I do actually currently live with my mum but uh, I'm not a gynophobic right-wing internet troll so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this one. Two more books for the list however. One has been on my TBR for ages and I can't believe I've not picked it up yet because it's not even very long. It's like less than 200 pages and I have read online that it's had really good reviews as well as some other booktubers I know having enjoyed it and that is Leftover Women, The Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China by Lita Hong Fincher. So this is obviously about feminism and sexism in China and women's lives in China and both how they're fighting back against um, oppression in China and it's just not something I know a ton about but would really like to learn more about because I think it's important to understand the lives of people outside of the country that you live in and that's kind of like where I'm coming at with my desire to read this one so really I should stop putting it off because it is so short. We then, last but not least, have something entirely different from everything else in this video but that is A Fatal Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum Murder in Ancient Rome by Emma Southen. So as you know I'm an ancient historian but I am a specialist in Greek history. I am however a specialist in Athenian law, like one of my areas of speciality is in <laughs> classical Athenian law and therefore I am interested in law from other ancient cultures. I just don't know as much. I've read a little bit about Roman law but very very little and this book obviously focuses in on um, murder and laws around homicide in the Roman Empire I believe. In fact I think this might actually cover a wide array of Roman history including the Republic and the Empire so this should be really really interesting in terms of both comparing it to what I know about ancient Greece and different cultures in ancient Greece as well as just like a fun ancient history that isn't directly related to my research or my specialities and might just take me back a little bit to like the early years of my study where I was just learning random things about random ancient cultures and that could be a lot of fun plus I believe this is meant to be delivered in quite like an accessible fun way so it's not a book written purely for academics and I think that's really really important. So those are the 10 non-fiction books at the top of my TBR. I don't actually have a ton of other non-fiction books on my shelves. There are a few others I'd like to get to, um, but maybe aren't as pressing. And therefore I'm hoping that these will be the next ones I read. But if there's any in particular you'd like to hear me talk about, then let me know in the comments down below. I'd also love to hear if you have any plans to read any non-fiction titles in November and what they are. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.